Welcome back to Watch It Print. So I've done a couple more design iterations to the hot end assembly and we're going to take a look at that today but we're mainly going to focus on an experiment and what that experiment is is trying to determine just how hot this plastic down here gets when it's sitting at zero on top of the hotbed. Reason is because when we run higher temperature materials such as like polycarbonate and things like that, we're going to end up running the bed temperature quite hot, you know, 100 degrees Celsius or so. On the, the temperature of the nozzle here will also be quite hot as well, especially after the upgraded uh, hot end assembly itself actually it goes to a higher temperature, potentially up to 300 degrees Celsius or so. Although I doubt you'll ever run it quite that hot. 275 is probably a, a little bit more reasonable. But understanding what temperature we're going to see right down here under some more challenging conditions will kind of allow me to target what materials I need to print this unit out of. So the two units I have here is revision 5 and revision 6. So revision 5 here is made of nylon and its temperature resistance is high enough to where I was able to print PETG with no problem at all with the bed at 90 degrees Celsius. So it was able to hold up to the temperature just fine. You can see that its print quality was not really that great. There were some things I was trying with this as far as you know, uh, allowing these to pull together right here so that the top and bottom could be two separate pieces. Played around with that for a little bit and decided I'm just going to print it as one piece. So that's what I ended up doing here to print the PETG version, which is version 6. Now, you can see I've done some things here with this unit. What's most noticeable is how I changed how the air is being directed to the nozzle. And as it turns out, this doesn't work at all. <laughs> most of the air just comes along the side and escapes straight out the back, avoiding the nozzle altogether. This version right here simply works a lot better because most of the air kind of flows front to back and then the sides work to kind of converge all the streams right around where the nozzle is. So I'll probably take a step back and go with this unit for seven. And then also I made a lot of improvements up here as far as the fit for this unit. So when you go to put this unit on, it actually fits really good now and if you go to take it off you kind of got to twist it a little bit. Mainly I made some things thicker on the sides just a little bit like 0.4 millimeters one extra pass and then also made things that actually grip onto the unit a little bit thicker and a larger offset in the inside for this fan wheel here so that it doesn't accidentally hit anything if you get a little stringing and whatnot. So if we twist this just a little bit, and then the unit comes right off. So to put it on, it's actually pretty simple. We just take this, kind of get one side going, and then get the other side. And now that thing's locked in place. And I can move this whole printer, and it's not a big deal. Give it a little twist, and it pops right off. Perfect. So because this unit here is not any good, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a hole right back here, and then I'm going to take I'm going to take this thermal coupler, which is kind of big, but I'm just going to shove it right inside of here. And then I'll get a readout of just how hot this area is when this unit's running near its maximum temperature and this plate down here is at 100 degrees Celsius. Alright, so you can see what I did here. I just cut the end off and if I take this and just go whoosh, that should give me a pretty good reading of just how hot that is. Okay, so I'm going to do three experiments. First, it's just going to be the hot end all by itself just sitting up here away from everything and then I'll have the hotbed at 100 degrees Celsius but this far away and we'll get a reading for that and then the last test will be right down there near the 
you know, with the nozzle touching the hot bed, while this is at 100 degrees Celsius, and the hot end is also hot. The temperature I'm going to run on the hot end will be at 250 degrees Celsius. Now the cooling fan is not running at all, obviously because if it was running then we wouldn't really have an issue with temperature. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes, and what I've been observing is that the temperature inside of that plastic there, right near the hot end, is not very hot at all. The maximum temperature I ever recorded was 37 degrees Celsius. And even feeling down here, you can feel that it's, you know, it's not very hot. And that makes sense, because the hot end itself, if we get a closer look at that, is insulated. There's that wrap that they have around the unit. And that's going to make a pretty big difference. Every time I've tried that on my hot ends, it's made a big, big difference. So, this guy right there is, is wrapped up. If you were to physically touch the metal, obviously you'd burn yourself in no time. But the amount of heat that's escaping from here is, is not a lot. And there's also a decent gap between the plastic and the hot end, and it's kind of down and away. So, I guess these results here are really not... We should kind of expect that. I thought it would be a little bit higher, but as it turns out, that's not the case. So for the next test, we're just going to increase the ambient temperature. And we're going to crank it up to 100 degrees Celsius on the bed, even though we're a ways away from it. Okay, so now the bed is set to 100 degrees Celsius. It's going to heat up, and then this is just going to radiate some heat. Now this is a glass top, so it's not going to be giving off a whole lot of heat. Um, mostly because the thermal conductivity of glass is very low. And there is a surface that's on top of this hot bed as well. And that doesn't radiate a whole lot of heat. If this was just an aluminum plate, it would actually radiate quite a bit more heat. It would also consume a whole lot more power. I have, a, I have a meter hooked up to this, and when it's running PLA, once it's preheated and everything, it runs around 60 watts altogether. So I'll let the bed heat up to 100, and then I'll start the timer and see what we get after 10 minutes. Okay, so it's been another 10 minutes after this thing hit about 100 degrees Celsius, and the temperature has increased to about 43 degrees Celsius up there. Okay, so now I'm just going to lower this down so that it's right there on the hot bed see what kind of temperature we end up getting up to. So that's zeroed out. It's all the way down. You can see the temperature is starting to rise. So this is an environment where PLA in the past has just warped all over the place. It's actually increasing very rapidly. If you feel near your hot bed, especially, you know, I don't know if you're, you don't really want to touch it, be careful, but you know, right near the surface of that glass, yeah, there's a good amount of heat. And this is at 100 degrees, so it's hot. I'm going to move the camera so that we can get a better look at what's going on in case things do start to move. I want to see it. Okay, so just about 60 degrees Celsius. Woo! Okay, so it's been a few more minutes. We're getting close to 65. The temperature's really not going up at this point. But is it warping? You know what? Down here on the end, yeah, it's, it's feeling soft. It may be that this is connected to like a cable and it's actually reading a lower temperature. Um, that could be one possible reason why I'm actually getting, why this feels, you know, it, it, it's stiff right here, but as you get further out, it starts to get soft, and I think what I'm seeing is it's warping just a little bit. So my takeaway is that this, without any cooling, could potentially get hot enough to where it would actually start to warp. 
So I'll need a higher temperature material than PETG to really guarantee that this isn't going to warp. So I went and looked at the material data sheets that I can get my hands on here. And, and PLA is right around 52 degrees Celsius for its maximum working temperature. After that it starts to get soft and move around like we're seeing here. 72 on PETG and as we can see this one is it's got to be hot enough at all the way back here to where it's just starting to get soft enough but then again I don't really know because I couldn't get this specific brand and then what I could get is the actual nylon over here uh, the Tolman 910 nylon and that's at 82 degrees Celsius so that's why this one here when I actually ran it didn't have any problems at all. However, it wasn't just sitting here baking in the heat. Whenever we're running this, obviously we're going to be moving the head around on, on top of the plate, and that's going to move some of the air across the unit. So there's a good chance that this would survive just fine. It also takes several minutes for it to get up to temperature to where it actually starts to get soft, and by then you should be up a couple of layers. If you're printing something like PETG, uh, then you'd have your cooling fan on at that point. However, if you're printing ABS, you could probably keep that fan off and we might see some warping down here, which is not what you want. It's not heavy warping, it's not like it isn't returning to the same spot, but I, I think we got to look at a higher temperature material. You know, run ABS or higher temperature PETG, I've seen some of those floating around. Or we could run nylon, if I can get it to print well enough. So as we can see here, this was the maximum I was able to record with my instrument. And I was able to observe that this here is indeed a little soft, just in this back corner. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up the cooling fan here, and we're going to see how big of a difference that actually makes. Okay, so the cooling fan is on. And temperature. We'll take this fan and we're just going to run it right to the maximum. Now, there's not a lot of flow that's going to move past that thermal thermistor down there because it's pretty much just plugging up the hole, but we'll see what kind of impact it has. You can see the temperature dropping right away. Yeah, look at that. Just a little bit of airflow down there. And that temperature is just falling away very, very quickly. Okay, so it hasn't been very long at all, but look at this. We're down to 49 degrees Celsius. I mean, temperature is just being blown. You know, all that heat's just getting blown away at this point. And yeah, you can see it right there, can't you? how that warped and moved around on us. Alright, so there's a good example. You can see how it kind of twisted and fell down a little bit. And that's all from the excessive heat. So I think this was a good experiment. I learned some stuff. So there you have it. That was a good experiment. I'm able to really see the results, get some measurements. If they were accurate at all, I'm not sure. but. There we have it. I think I'll go ahead and try some ABS. I have plenty of that around. Plus we can get that in a lot of really fancy colors. Maybe I can even try some polycarbonate. Ooh. But, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Watch It Print. And if you've got some recommendations for me, go ahead and leave that down in the comment section below. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day guys. Stay awesome. Peace.